Hey, how's it going? And welcome to the first brand new Skyrim Anniversary Edition, which I believe makes this the seventh if you include the magnificent, very special edition on Alexa. And as you all know by now, this release includes all the Creation Club stuff, old and new. So we're going to dive in with Bittercup, where the Forest of Falkreath lies a mysterious altar promising the gift of a single boon. Walk the path that reflects your desire or lack thereof and embark yes, on a unique adventure based on that choice. Discover the fabled Bittercup and a choice of three separate quests. Okay, so to start this off, we need to go to the Dead Man's Drink in Falkreath and in one of the rooms, read the book Mysterious Altar to start the quest A Dying Wish which sends us to Roadside Ruins, a small outdoor uh, Nordic ruin, pretty close to Falkreath. And uh, you may have to deal with a sprig and so prepare for that. And in the ruin, you'll find the mysterious altar. Now, before we start, there's an enchanting skill book beside the altar, which is hidden in the foliage, so uh, don't miss that. The altar has three bowls for you to activate. Each one offers a different quest and different wards. They are the altar of nothing, the altar of power, and the altar of fortune. Now it's worth noting with all these quests, you will get bitter cut potion, which will permanently increase the greater of health, stamina, and magicka by 20 points, and decrease the lesser by 20 points. So for example, if you have magicka at 120, health at 110, and stamina at 100, Magicka will increase to 140 and your stamina will drop to 80. So this is definitely a buyer beware situation and think about it before you use it or you know if you ever do. Okay so we'll start with a fill of nothing and for this quest you'll get Rulnik's dagger and Rulnik Windstride himself, a potential new follower. Now I haven't checked or I forgot to check uh, if this is true or not but I've heard he may not be included in your follower account, which could mean that you can potentially have two followers, for example, Lydia and Rulnik. Uh, not sure about this. Uh, leave a comment below and tell me if that's true or not. Anyway, let's crack on. Okay, so we've been to the pub and uh, activated the book, and now we're going to hit the altar of nothing. So what we've got to do now is just head back to town and you'll be met by the courier. You're going to be seeing this guy an awful lot. Got something <laughs> I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands are Let's see. Looks like that's it. We've got to go. This is dreary then, isn't it? Now, I'm not surprised they met them. Oh, just a quick FYI. This character, the uh, anniversary edition, completely bought my game. Uh, absolutely and completely bought it. So I had to do a clean install. Uh, rejig all my mods so yeah. if it looks a little bit different that's why um, oh, and my character sorry. is spankingly brand new anyway so what we've got to do is we've got to go to uh, an island now we have got a choice between two ferrymen I've always used the one on Dawnstar the one in Solitude doesn't uh, want to take you and this guy does now when we get to this island it's quite tricky, especially if you're a low character. So there's a giant's camp here. So what I suggest you do is go up the side and sneak around. We've got to get to a cave. And again, if you're a low level, I'd strongly suggest you bring some followers here. You're going to be dealing with giants, spriggans and ice rays. Now, it is possible not to have tangled with the dry, uh, giants if you don't want to, but um, for some reason I kept on getting into fights with them. So the ice rays activated them, so uh, yeah. It should be possible to get past them without fighting. And a little note from the fisherman. And in the barrel. And it looks like we've got another new fish. I 
Okay, now, so never you pick the fruit, the springs will activate. So, just take them out. Oh, for the sake of this video, I'm just telling you I'm in God mode because there's no way my character at the level she's she's not even level one. Well, she's level one, obviously, um, but basically just level one with absolutely nothing. I haven't even managed to do my normal startup routine where I get a star fat track all that kind of rubbish. So uh, yeah, she's weak as a weak thing. But for the purposes of making these videos, uh, you know. See me struggling. No, I can do if you want it. If you want it, but uh, you'll see me die a lot, and it'll take a long time to do some of these. And I've got to say, some of these quests actually are quite tricky, which is nice to see on on mods. Because up to now, apart from Umbra, I think Umbra was, yeah, that was tricky. Um, but a lot of them have been a little bit too easy, I think. But some of these are quite, yeah, quite tough. Okay, and you've got the ice rays here. Yeah, oh, Janice is down. Better help her out. You don't have to mess with these. There are ways to uh, deal with these guys. I wouldn't be doing that if I wasn't in god mode. <laughs> okay, and all you do is come and find the uh, the fairy man who's just taking a wander down the beach. Need something? I understand. Climb on in the boat and get comfortable. Okay, obviously I'm going to cut an awful lot of this out. So, uh, but we're going to head back over to uh, White Run. And when we get there, we're going to need to cook up um, the health potion. Um, you now you need skeever's tail and salt piles as well as the fruit you picked in the cave. Uh, for that now, if you still haven't got a home like my character hasn't, I haven't even got um, me and Watchtower yet. Um, I've just gone into uh, the, the Ban of Mare. Knocks up a quick potion and just head into the temple. Yes? You've done well. My body burns. Thank you. More rest will do you good. And we've got to wait 24 hours to him to heal, so I just uh, press T, whatever control you're using, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Oh, try to relax. Oh. You'll be well soon blessing on you. There's a few dialogues there. I, I don't think any of them make any different. You end up with the same result. Now, just a quick FYI here. Uh, he, I had, when I first tried this, I had Genesis as a follower, and he wouldn't follow me uh, at that point. So I had to get rid of Genesis um, before he, before I went into the temple, um, and then he followed me. So, hence. I'm not 100% sure whether he actually does or does not add to the follower account. So, anyway, at the end of this, you're getting um, Raw Nick himself as a potential follower. I don't know how he's, how good he is. He doesn't have anything particularly interesting in his inventory or anything like that. You've got a dagger, which is a nice looking uh, dagger. Um, it's quite decent by the looks of it, but you know, nothing uh, special. Uh, if you want to keep on using this, I strongly suggest you don't enchant this um, until you've actually got your enchanting of smithing up to a high level because um, obviously you can only enchant it once so there you go uh, looks like a possibly decent follower and uh, yeah, decent weapon okay
So next we have the Altar of Power. Now for this you'll get the Crown Champion's Helm, which is very gladiator-like and uh, quite decent. And you'll also get the Grand Champion Sword, which actually I do like this. Again, it's a, a very decent weapon. Okay, so in this one, uh, my character is extremely low level. Uh, she's got no perks into anything. I had to literally recreate everything. Um, um, so she's got nothing going for her at all. This is quite tricky. This is why I've gone into God mode. Now, it is doable at low level, but you will die a lot. And it will take you a long time. However, it is uh, doable. But for the purpose of this video, I've gone into God mode so you can see what you can, you're doing here. Okay, so when you come out of here, there's a few uh, like little um, prison cells. Uh, go in and get armoured up. You have nothing. You have no potions. You have nothing. Now this is fine if you like uh, high, high magic and stuff like that. Uh, you're, you're fine. But for the low level characters, this is tricky. Yeah, get yourself kitted up before you go in, for God's sake. Now, if I was doing this in level one, I would take care of these two. These two, are, they're reasonably tough, but they are doable. Um, but to the left, there's some um, hay bales. Jump up on them, and if you've got that bow and pick up the arrows, then you can pick these um, tigers off, and indeed the uh, champion when she comes out to fight you. Um, you can run around quickly and grab all any loose and stuff, and you can obviously take it with you. Um, but yeah, for some reason, uh, when I did it on level one, uh, they just wouldn't come up on the straw bales with me, so I could pick them off. Okay, just these straw bales up there in front of us now. But like I say, for the sake of this bit video, I just it just uh, make it too long. she comes out and she is quite tough obviously like I said I mean god knows that she didn't stand a chance um, now the people watching above you will start shooting arrows at you so get, get, get out of the way as soon as you can this is actually really tough really tough if you're a low level obviously ignore all the stats you're seeing now I'm in super silly mode. I'm guessing if you're a wood elf, you could actually get the same with cats to uh, uh, be friendly. And rush up and all your gears in here, plus loads and loads of golds and jewels and stuff like that. So you do pick up a fair bit of uh, gold. You know what, you can't um, get your gear out. You've got to go and have a scrap with the uh, boss pit. Then. 
when you lose round, uh, you'll need to get the key off the um, the boss pit. Boss pit? Pit boss. <laughs> uh, so you can get all your gear out. I couldn't see a way to get to the people above, which would have been nice to deal with them, but uh, yeah, couldn't do that. So, that's it. Just grab all your gear. And once you're done, just simply head on out. Job done. So, as I said, you get the helm and the sword, um, both very decent stats. I'm not a massive fan of the, the helm myself, I think it's a little bit un Skyrim, Skyrim -ish Um But like I say, the stats are great. The sword, I think, is really, really decent. It looks like it's in between uh, an Ebony and Daedric, I'm not really sure, um, but obviously a lot lighter than uh, Daedric. Um, cracking little sword, don't enchant it until you've really maxed out your enchanting and smithing so you can get the max out of it if you do want to use it as an end game weapon. So yeah, decent rewards and you pick up a lot of other bits and bobs uh, while you're down there. So yeah, not too bad, but it is tricky, I'm warning you at a low level, it's, it is tricky. And the third and final quest is at the Altar of Fortune. Now, as you can see, there isn't anything specific that I'm showing at the front, what you get as a reward, but you get a crap ton of gold, a few weapons, and a few other bits and bobs as well. Um, this is definitely the one I would choose if I was actually doing a proper playthrough and definitely at a lower level. Um, anyway, once you've done it, you have to wait um, to actually be given your quest and you do that by going to the bedroll uh, in the ruin and sleeping there and what you do then is you'll find a note in your inventory that someone slips in while you're sleeping and that's going to send you off to a mark calf and it gives you several options uh, how you can actually do this quest. Um, obviously, I haven't been to Mark Arth at this level, um, so I'm going by the carriage. Now, you can either poison the guard, you can kill the guy, or you can pickpocket him. Actually, there's a fourth. You can befriend him. Now, if you befriend him and tell him what's going on, he will be really rude to you and just give you 300 gold. I'm going to show you the way uh, where you can actually make far more money than that. And there is a little something here, um, which is really good. Yes. Now, when you normally come to Markarth, there's um, uh, Walk away. murder going on, which you, if you can, you should stop it. Uh, but this guy gets in the way, so you can't stop him. So anyway, I've approached him, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pickpocket him. Like I say, there are other ways, other ways of doing this. I prefer this way. There are your options there. I hope you stay in Mark Hearth treats you better. Now, if you are going to go this route, get some much enchantment uh, gear, pickpocketed enchantment, enchanted gear, as you can. Okay, so we go to follow further instructions. Now I'm assuming whoever the rogue is, um, they've killed this person. So you can take their clothes. Which will have a bearing on what I do later. Okay, simply uh, seal the letter and put on the courier's clothes.
Warren's aim for you. Uh, this one's actually uh, quite an easy one to do. I don't need to be god known for this, but um, you know, for the sake of this video, I will remain so. Now, all you've got to do is remember the uh, courier's pitter patter. So, uh, otherwise, it'll tell you to bugger of off. Indeed. Now, go away. There you go. Job done. Basically, what you've done is you stitched up his bodyguard. He was the guy preventing, preventing the road getting to him. However, what you can do is you can sneak into his room and kill him. And the bodyguard doesn't give a crap. So you can actually do this without uh, hurting the bodyguard if you want to do it properly. Don't get too far ahead. I should have done it that way anyway. But uh, hey. And just simply follow him down into the warrens. Now, in the run through, I did try talking to him, but he just he just attacks you. So, suck him. He's a piece of scum anyway. Now we got the rogue. Now he's going to yes, give you a yes. thousand gold. I'm Make sure you, you get the gold from him before Please you do what I'm going to do. This as payment. It can't be helped. But enough of this. Such things are best forgotten. And also, a quick FYI as well, do a quick save before you actually come into this room at this stage, because you get different spawns. Um, I did it twice, and I got different things uh, each time, and the first one actually was quite good. Uh, so like I say, do a quick save before you do this. Kill this guy, and you get a load of gear off him. You get a crap ton of gold here, actually. Little safe over here. And I'll show you the one thing I really like about this, this particular quest, um, later. You end up getting roughly around about 3,000 gold, including the stuff from uh, the Rogue, uh, plus a load of other bits of Bob's jewellery, uh, gems, uh, a few weapons, and that kind of stuff. But like I said before, there's actually something here which uh, I'll show you later. That is specifically good for lower, well, lower to mid actually. Um, 
in characters. Okay. Once that's all done, just head outside. Okay, so now the reason why I'd actually take this option is, I don't know if you noticed in the safe, you got the master uh, transmute spell. Now, normally a transmute spell would take two iron ore to make one silver ore and then onto one gold ore. This one, one iron ore turns into one gold ore. So if you imagine uh, that, that if, if you're on a low level, iron ore is simply everywhere. So you can literally transmute it into iron ore, make it into jewellery, um, enchant it, add in jewels, and you'll be making an absolute fortune. And also, once you transmute it, any iron ore, uh, sorry, um, stolen, stolen ore, will immediately become unmarked as stolen as well. So an absolutely brilliant way of making money. Okay, I had five iron ore and one silver ore in my inventory. And you've got a bonus to this as well. If you do this properly, you boost up your alteration, your smithing and your speech, and indeed your enchanting uh, by doing this. If you enchant your jewellery, which you should. Um, so it's a pretty decent, there you go, five gold ore, a six sorry, that's from the five iron and the one silver I had. So yeah, I really, really like this, uh, this is definitely the one I would go for personally. But of course you don't have anything pretty to hang on your uh, racks or put on your mannequins if you do. So there you have it, three differing quests giving you differing rewards, all offering you the bitter cup potion, which I'm guessing was meant to be the star of the show, but in my opinion most people probably won't use. I would definitely be interested to see how Rulnik is as a follower, but if this were a proper playthrough I think I'd, I'd definitely go for the Altar of Fortune for the gold and most definitely that Master Transmute spell, I think that's great. Anyway, there's your choices, make them wisely. Hope you found the video useful and I'll catch you later. Love you.